thank you guys so much for coming. It's such an honor to be here. I am Dixie Dixon, and I am a fashion commercial photographer based out of Fort Worth, Texas. And photography is my ultimate passion. It's such an honor, honor to be here. Um, if you want to win a book at the end of this, I like to give away a couple books to new followers on Instagram. Um, also, if you're tuning in live, you can also do this, and I randomly pick a couple of them to send a signed copy of my book to. So if you want to win one, follow me on there. And we're going to get into a lot about lighting in photography today. How many of you guys specialize in natural light? Any of you? OK, a couple of you guys. Yeah, so when I was starting out as a photographer, I always loved to shoot natural light because I was so afraid to jump into the studio and you know get my feet wet in the studio. And what I did was I actually learned how to create different lighting by renting a studio space just like right by my house. I would spend a couple hours a week working in the studio. And that's really how I experimented and I learned lighting. Um, but natural light is still one of my absolute favorite type of photography lighting because it's really and truly the light that was made for us. It's beautiful, it's soft, the way you use it as everything to do with how you create your photographs. The name of this giraffe is Gerald, one of my absolute favorite models I've ever gotten to shoot. Just an amazing animal to work with. The model and the giraffe were actually shot together. Um, I did edit the background a little bit, but it's so much fun working with these animals. And you know, it's interesting because you have to be very careful and not use strobe when working with animals. Natural light really is the way to go because you might spook the animals um, and it might you know, scare the animals and create a big um, issue there. So I always like to photograph animals in natural lighting. And it's just a really fun experiment. How many guys love black and white photography? Yes! Oh my gosh, black and white is my absolute favorite kind of photography. You really get to the soul of whoever it is that you're photographing. And I think that really comes through in the black and white. So I like to photograph these in black and white. And you know, color can be really beautiful as well. This is the end of the day lighting. Um, a, a longhorn named Flash, actually. Really amazing animal to work with. So I've been doing these different shoots with animals lately, and it's been such a fun experience. And um, this is a quick shot of my current client list. I've added a couple really cool new clients this past year, from Michael Kors uh, to Lucchese Boots, Old Gringo. Um, Marriott, so I kind of shoot a wide range of things from fashion to commercial work and it's just been such a fun experience. I work with the big dream team. I call them the dream team. How many of you guys work with a team? Any of you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I work with a producer, you know, a lighting tech. And keep in mind, I only started out with me and a camera, um, but I've since grown my dream team to different models and creative artists and it kind of makes what I do a lot easier. So we have a hair and makeup artist that specializes in hair and makeup. And it's really a great idea to build your team. I actually built my team on modelmayhem.com um, back when I was first starting. And it really makes your job a lot easier as you go along. I am currently shooting with the Nikon Z8. And how many of you guys have shot with the Z8? Ah, oh, amazing camera, is it not? I am just blown away by the way it renders skin tones. It's really such an amazing tool for fashion photography. And with the new Z lenses, you really cannot go wrong with this camera. My two favorite lenses for portraits and fashion are the 85 millimeter 1.2. How many of you guys have that one? Any of you? Yeah, it's such an amazing lens. And the 135 1.2 as well. Those are my two favorite fashion lenses currently. Um, the 135 they just released as well, and it's just such an amazing tool. I love the prime lenses. Um, so lately, I actually recently purchased the Nikon ZF camera. It's a really fun tool. I got to shoot the ad campaign for Nikon uh, to launch this camera, and it's just a really fun tool to walk around, you know, take to vacations and family gatherings and whatnot, and I just like to walk around this camera because it's really artful. It has a actual dial on the top where you can switch to black and, white, black and white mode originally. So it's a really great way to, you know, take, capture those black and whites and just really quickly in camera. But I really feel like I've gotten back to the art of photography and shooting with this Nikon ZF. And I've really enjoyed it. This is actually in front of B&H camera in New York City. So they've ran the billboards there. And uh, it comes in different colors. This is really fun. I actually ended up going with the pure black and white camera version of this. But I love the different colors that it comes in. 
Um, it also has these amazing tools. You can have the 40 millimeter kit or the 28 millimeter. And so I've been utilizing these in my family and just kind of fun work, really just passion projects and things like that is what I use this camera for. And really and truly, I take it with me everywhere. So it's been such a fun tool to create with. I love the orange one, really fun to create. And uh, natural light is always key, but this was such a fun ad campaign to bring to life. And uh, let's get into a little bit more about lighting. So I do a lot of different kinds of lighting. I use natural light, I use strobe, I use constant light, depending on the different concept that I'm going for. This was a recent lingerie editorial that I photographed. And it very much, the lingerie had a very natural, soft type of feel. So I wanted to go with more natural type of lighting for these, for these particular shots. And this is all kind of backlit by the sun. We use a reflector to bounce light back into my subject. And it really kind of brings out the lingerie really beautifully um, and brings out her beauty. This is shot with the 85 millimeter and it's at 1.2, but I will tell you guys, when you shoot the 85.1.2 with the new eye autofocus on the Z8, Z9, and ZF cameras, it's incredible how well it focuses right on the eyes and everything else just falls out of focus really beautifully. So I'm utilizing these a lot. I love to kind of shoot through things in the foreground, like leaves and seeing things like that. And uh, creating that really shallow depth of feel adds a really beautiful effect to the final shot. So this one, keep in mind when you're doing lighting, you want to place the lighting where the window would be. So I always, you know, this is actually shot with constant lighting and I put the, the light right where the window would have been and it kind of turned the model's face towards that lighting and it really creates a really beautiful, iconic look. So I light these a very similar way. These are all constant light type of shots. Um, these are also made with constant lighting. I love constant light sometimes because what you see is what you get and you're really able to see before you shoot the shot what it's going to look like. So these are catalog type of looks. So we have the camera right on and then the lighting off to the side just a little bit. And you see I always turn the model's face towards that lighting and it really creates a nice curve of her face and brings out her features really nicely. And uh, this one is actually with backlight. When I'm shooting portraits, I love backlight. How many of you guys shoot backlight? Right? Oh, it's just so dreamy and it really gives it like a really golden glow of her skin and everything. So I utilize backlight a lot in my shots. Um, this is actually with strobe. This was a ad campaign for Osadia tequila. And uh, we did get to try the tequila afterwards. That's always fun. <laughs> but uh, basically I shot this was a, they, the client wanted a look that looked like almost on camera flash. But on-camera flash, as you guys know, is not super flattering. So I wanted to make it more beautiful. So basically, I added a strobe above my head and then put a beauty dish around it. And so basically, just shooting straight on, it kind of gave it a kind of on-camera flash type of contrasty, punchy look, but without actually being on-camera flash, if that makes sense. So it still has a really nice vibe to it. Um, this is all, you can light a lot more contrasty with black and white type of photography. And so it just creates that cool look. And they ended up running these on billboards and American Airlines Center and uh, some different places. These are all you know, shot pretty much straight on. I don't do a ton of editing in my work. I like to kind of shoot the way that it's going to end up. I don't do a lot of compositing or anything like that. Um, I just love the creation of everything in camera. So if I can get a giraffe or a lion or anything like that, I'm going to want to create it in camera. Um, it's way more fun. So these black and whites turned out really cool. They're kind of like a sepia toned. You add a little bit of warm effect to that. And they're all shot exactly the same way. This was shot at the Thompson Hotel in Dallas, Texas. So it was a really quite fun shoot, a really beautiful location. And I'd love to show you guys the video from that. Oh, here we go.
about lighting. To me, really, light is really the heart and soul of photography. And you can nail everything else, but if you don't nail the lighting, it's not going to sing and it's not going to have that beautiful you know, effect that really draws the viewer's eyes into your photographs. So I love to really and try to figure out the mood of the photograph that I'm looking for before I go into actually creating the lighting. Sometimes you have to get up at 6 a.m. in the morning to capture that sunrise and able to get your shots, and sometimes it's totally worth it. You know, that morning lighting is so beautiful. I do a lot of color grading and split toning, which is basically when you color your shadows a certain color. So I colored the shadows purple here, and then I also colored the highlights sort of a more golden tone. So it kind of creates a really nice color effect. If you look at different films and movies, they always have a select color palette. So you want to be sure and control the color palette, the lighting, the composition, and then finally you'll get to fo focus on the expression that you're looking for. Um, so those are the real basics that you need to go for. Um, lighting wise, I, like I said, I love backlit. This is actually shot with an on-camera flash and backlit by the sun, very simple stuff. You know, we put the flamingos in the background. It's always fun to create some fun props in the background. Um, this is natural lighting, window light. How many of you guys love using window light? Yes, window light is so beautiful. So basically the window is on the right side, just kind of streaming in and kind of goes across her face really beautifully. Um, now with side lighting, you do have to do a little bit more retouching because it tends to bring out more texture in the model's skin, but sometimes it's worth it because it can also bring out the texture in the clothes. So side lighting is great for bringing out texture and fashion and really making that stand out so you can see the texture and the look of it. So I use side lighting for that kind of thing. And I love, for portraits though, I love to shoot in towards the model. So basically, she is facing the window, and then my back is against the window shooting into her. So the light basically wraps around her face really beautifully, and it just creates a really nice soft effect, especially for women, because women, it's more fun to make them look really soft and porcelain, whereas men, it's really fun to side light them and make them look really rugged. Um, so that's kind of how I tend to light. This is shot exactly the same way. I kind of do this kind of lighting all the time. Um, if you have a garage, you can shoot into your garage and it's going to create a really nice effect. Um, I also added a leaf in front of the lens here to give it a little bit of flare because um, I love that sort of flare, kind of airy type of feel. Um, these are all shot with a Nikon 85mm 1.2. 
I have literally had this lens on my camera probably 85% of the time since I've gotten it. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful portrait lens. So I love shooting through cactuses. Somehow on every single production, I end up in bushes or in cactuses. I don't even know how that happens. Um, but it definitely is worth it for the shot. And uh, they're a little prickly though, but it's fun to kind of frame things out in the foreground. So like I said, that 85-1-2, oh my gosh, if you guys haven't to, gotten to like touch and feel it, definitely check it out here at the booth. It is just a spectacular, spectacular lens. Um, this is all raw right out of the camera, just so you can see the beauty of the Nikon files, the secret sauce that they have between their lenses and their cameras. I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is, you know, 100% zoomed in, non-retouched right out of the camera. Um, that's really, I think, the beauty of the Nikon files is I've had retouchers look at different files from all the different cameras, and he said that the Nikon Z files are the cleanest, most sharp, beautiful shots that he has seen from all the different brands. Um, so obviously I've been a Nikon shooter my entire life, but man, it, it is amazing the secret sauce and the skin tones that they really bring out so beautifully. Um, this is actually, believe it or not, this is a parking lot in the background. Um, but with that 85-1-2, you can blur it out so beautifully and create some amazing shots because, I mean, I'm in Texas. I'm born and raised in Texas. In the backgrounds that we get, we don't have mountains. We don't have all these spectacular backgrounds. We get a lot of fields and things like that. So it's nice to kind of blur your background out a little bit and really focus in on whoever it is that you're shooting. So I tend to shoot portraits that way. I use probably a minimum of the 85 millimeter lens when I'm photographing portraits. I don't use a wide angle lens for portraits because it kind of distorts the model's features. Um, so I would say don't use a 35 or anything wider. The 85 is probably the minimum that I would shoot a headshot with and it just creates a really nice flattening effect with the features. Um, it makes everything look really beautiful, really consistent. And you can even go even longer if you want to, like the 105 or the 180. So those are really all amazing portrait lenses to use, but my like, current fave, like, like I said, is the 85 millimeter. It's absolutely beautiful. This was actually for the Nikon creators, and a really fun shot. We lit this very, very easily. You know, it's backlit by the sun, front lit with uh, basically a couple of strobes. So you can see the lighting diagram here. Very simple stuff. I usually only use, if any, one to two lights. Very, keeping very, very simple. Um, I like to really be able to focus in on my connection with whoever it is I'm shooting as opposed to messing with my lighting constantly. So I like to nail the lighting and then focus in on the expression of whoever it is I'm shooting. So this one we actually used two lights. Um, it was very overcast this day, so I used a beauty dish in the front, um, kind of off to the side so you get a nice shadow on her face. And then we used a backlight with a beauty dish as well, a little bit overexposed so you get a nice hair light that almost looks like sunshine. Um, so it looks very natural. It looks like this could have been lit just with natural lighting. Because I like to keep things very, very natural when I shoot, very, very simple. Um, so these are kind of the lighting diagrams. I went ahead and put those together. And then another way that I like to photograph, you know, if we have some nice lighting in the location, I'll utilize the natural lighting and then I will use a strobe to just bounce a little bit of light to add a kiss of life to their faces. So basically we added a strobe in the corner, bounced it off the corner, and then it bounces back into her face. So it's a lot softer than it would be if you had it straight on the model. So you can see how I did that here. It's just literally bouncing off the edge and then it kind of fills the space a little bit beautifully and then bounces right into your subject. Um, that's how I light a lot with strobes. And believe it or not, do you guys think this was lit with strobes? Any of you? No? Natural light? Yes, it actually was lit with natural light. I used a fog machine to bring out the nice sun rays and it really just creates a really cool effect. I actually shot this with the 35 millimeter lens and to really bring in that background, the 35 is really fun for really capturing the location and the model as well. Kind of has like a Harry Potter type of theme and uh, that fog machine just really adds a really cool effect to the shot, it's really fun. This is a recent beauty editorial this was really an interesting shoot, lots of really high-end jewelry. We actually had to have security on set for this um, to make sure no one walked off with the jewelry. I guess it's really fancy. <laughs> so we use one light here, very simple. Um, I always shoot jewelry editorials at like F11 and F16 because I want to be sure that the model's face and eyelashes are in focus as well as the jewelry. 
So usually when I shoot portraits, I like to shoot very wide open, like f2.8, f2, f1.2. But with jewelry, you want to stop down to really get that jewelry in tight focus, especially when you're shooting with, for commercial clients and magazines and things like that. So this is basically the lighting diagram here. And we had a, a V-flat on the edge, um, basically to add a little bit of shadow. And then we had a shoot through white umbrella. And it just creates a nice soft effect for those shots. Um, very simple stuff. Um, like I said, I like to keep things very, very simple. This was actually a fun shot. I used three lights on this one. And I used a octo in the front and then two lights on the background that just kind of um, basically shines the forward. You can see this, the lighting set up here. It's very simple. I used um, umbrellas on the background. Keep in mind that you don't want to overexpose your background when you're shooting high key by too much because you'll start getting flare in the lens. So you want to just overexpose your background by like a half a stop. Um, and you'll get some really beautiful effects. This is shot with one lighting and uh, just literally one octo, very, very simple stuff. I always love using a hair fan. Um, I use a battery operated leaf blower to really capture the hair and create some movement and it really ends up to be a really beautiful shot. We have two lights in this shot because one I was using for video and then one I was using for strobes. So that's always a tricky situation when you want to shoot both video and strobe at the same time. I particularly like to use constant light usually, but strobe works good as well. This was utilizing two, actually just one light in this one. And we actually found this cool background from the hardware store. This is literally, you know the reflectors that you put in front of your car, like on top of the car and the windshield? That's literally stapled to the background to make it look like metal. Uh, so this is a really fun way to shoot and create some really nice reflections and things like that. I love like going to the hardware store and finding different things that I can utilize in my images. Um, like I said, it's just literally one light and that V-flat with the, the stapled um, background to the V-flat. Very, very simple stuff, very easy to shoot. Um, this was actually a really fun shot for Pro Photo. And I shot um, a light through the keyhole. So I cut out a keyhole out of a V-flat, shined a light through it, and it created this keyhole effect on her face. So this was really fun. We also added a fill light to kind of add in a little bit of fill to this image. And it kind of has like a Wonder Woman type of look to it, really interesting. So you can see the setup here. It was a really fun shoot, really fun stuff. And this was for the Nikon 85 millimeter campaign. And obviously I wanted to really bring out the bokeh of this lens. So we've got this cool background on Etsy and I put that in the background and then shine a light on the side of it so that it really brings out the texture of that bokeh and then basically a light in the front as well and keeping it very, very simple. And you can see that here. So all very simple lighting setups. Any of you guys can do this. This one was backlit, we used flower. Um, if you ever, ever kind of played with flower, is a really fun tool uh, to bring out uh, some cool texture. It does make a total mess of the studio is the only problem. This actually was not my studio. <laughs> and we had flower everywhere. It was on the background. It was, it was, it was a disaster, but it was so worth it for the picture because um, we had this beautiful ballerina in the shot and she just kind of brought it to life really beautifully. So much fun. And then this is also for the 85 campaign. This is all shot with the 85 millimeter. These are all constant lighting. Um, very, very simple stuff. You can see how it creates a really nice light with that fog machine. Have you guys ever worked with fog machines? I just so support <laughs> using fog machines in shot because it adds a real instant mood to the photograph. And it really makes things look very high fashion, very beautiful. This is a really fun designer that I work with, Stephen Godu. And uh, he has such amazing gowns and things like that. So I'd love to get into a little bit on how I shoot stills and video in the same production. And this is actually a behind the scenes video from the Z8 campaign for Nikon. And I'd love to get into more of that. Do we have sound? <laughs> advertising photographer, film director, and Nikon ambassador based out of Dallas, Texas. 
when I picked up the Z8 from using the Z9 for about a year and a half, it was a seamless process. Everything was the same, the buttons were the same, and I think that really allowed me to just go in and create what I needed to. It's very challenging when you're having to shoot both stills and video in the same production, but I found that the Z8 really makes it pretty seamless. It's definitely a challenge mentally because you got to think about moving images as opposed to just still images. It's a challenge that I'm definitely up for. Having a hybrid type of camera for this type of production is, it's everything. It's of most importance because when you're having to shoot stills and go from stills to immediately shooting video, uh, this camera allows you to do so seamlessly. The body style, the ergonomics of this camera, smaller body style is really nice for video because you can throw it on a gimbal and get to work really quickly. And I really love the fact that you can also take high resolution stills from the actual video footage and they look exceptional. For this production, the Z8 was a game changer. I loved every minute of creating with this camera. All right. Love the Z8. How many of you guys are shooting with the Z8? Any of you? Ah, a bunch of you guys. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with this camera. One of my favorite shots from that campaign was definitely the poodle shot. I love getting the animals in there. Always love working with animals. But it definitely adds a lot of time because the poodle was not cooperating through this whole shoot and it did not want to sit on the heart-shaped chair that I wanted it to, so we ended up having to bring out the feigning couch for it to lounge on, and then we were able to create that shot. So sometimes you have to keep massaging the image in order to get what you're looking for, but you got to keep shooting until you get that shot. We actually used two diva lights to light this on either side. So the diva light on this side lights up the poodle, and then on the other side it lights up the model. Uh, constant lighting is the way to go when you're shooting both video and stills in the same production. So I always, always opt for that. And basically I'll go in and shoot stills first, and then I go into shooting the video. And that's really how we like to create. And usually we'll have the, the camera on a gimbal for the video side to create those real smooth motion kit clips. And it really creates a really beautiful effect. Um, the poodle was awesome. And we did a lot of fun shots for this particular campaign. Uh, you know, lots of interesting wardrobe. Again, using that 85 to really bring your eye to the models in this picture. Um, the 85 is such an amazing lens. I've just been obsessed with it. Then I also use a lot of complementary colors in my work. The color scheme works really well for Nikon, obviously using the Nikon yellow. Um, but it really kind of brings your eye into the frame. And I love working with reflections. You know, we have this crazy location um, from Peer Space. Peer Space is such a great place to find different photo shoot locations. And I found this crazy house in the middle of nowhere with these beautiful uh, Versailles type interior. So it was a perfect location for this shoot. And we were able to create all these different kinds of cool shots. And you know, I use those complementary colors basically across from each other on the color wheel a lot in my work because it really has a beautiful vibrancy. So using you know, the blues and the yellows really kind of brings your eye into the frame and uh, creates really beautiful stuff. So I think that I am almost out of time. <laughs> I have 20 seconds left. Um, but I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for coming today. I also have a new course out um, called Nikon Mentors. 
And basically, I go super in depth into fashion photography and video in that course, and it's on Nikon's website if you're interested in learning more. And man, it's, I hope you guys have the best show. It is so great. Thank you guys so much for coming. I'm really grateful. Um, so great to be here today. Thank you guys.